The fact of the matter is that many of our greatest artists in this country came from the South and grew up looking at this stuff. And uh, I once made a trip all the way across the South just simply going to black graveyards and communities and settlements around where many of our greatest artists grew up, Rauschenberg in Texas, yes, Jasper Johns yes. in South Carolina, right near Georgia, and uh, Twombly. A lot of these artists grew up in the South, and their work is so clearly, clearly influenced heavily by the Black South and the... Can we look at some Purvis Black Young South. pieces now? Oh, by all means. This is Purvis Young, who was... Wow. Miami. These are fabulous. And these are original Purvis Youngs from the walls that he decorated in 19 in the early 70s in a place called Good Bread Alley, which was in a, a black ghetto in, uh, in Miami. These are all pieces from that wall. It's, it's not fair to either those artists or their influences to call it unconscious because they saw it. They recognized the importance of it. It's just like in the early 20th century the people in Europe who recognized first the importance of so-called primitive art that was being shown in Europe. Then. That's right, the African, the African sculptures and, that the Cubists and, and borrowed Oceanic. from and the Oceanics, that's yeah, I right. Mean, the, the, the people who understood the beauty of it and the majesty were the artists and art dealers and art collectors that could recognize that there was something in it. I, I can't even, I'm not going to try to tell you the famous artists who had come to see our stuff collection in the 80s and thereabouts um, <laughs> and we're, we're heavily moved by it. I'm not going to say influence because I don't mean influence. Well I think that the best artists are always the scavengers that are out there keeping their eyes open and looking at and seeing what they can use. Nothing and wrong with that. No and, and I, I think I, I do think it'd be nice to give the sources a little bit of respect as well. That's true but I do think that in certain ways that's also one of the great uh, the great qualities of a lot of this work is these people were, were scavengers in a lot of ways they were. with materials and ideas and color and feelings. Uh, well, this is the, great. This whole field of art gets reduced to a sort of, uh, I don't know, uh, subspecies of self-taught or folk or something. It, Naive it's never art or art yeah, brood. Or it's never considered Outsider just simply art. American art, which is what it is, and it's and then and by it, any standard, it's it's separate but equal to 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 coin a phrase. But the the fact is, these artists are really not self-taught. They didn't go to an art school and take lessons, but they grew up in a culture that was immersed in visual arts. All you have to do is go where I go and look at what I look at, photograph what I photograph, and you see that in these black communities. It is about art. Black people from the time they arrived in this hemisphere would, were not given the right to learn to speak properly or to read and write, and they developed other means of communications, and the two that, the one that's the most obvious now to everyone is music, but the other one, which was equally important and equally qualitatively equally good, was the visual arts which stayed hidden. You could move the music and you could hear it and transport it, but the art stayed hidden. And because of its subversive nature, most of the people who made it, even today, don't want to talk about it to strangers. Because they figure you'll either think they're into voodoo or they're into something they shouldn't be into, or making cultural comments they shouldn't be making. Now, how long has it been that you've been uh, sort of amassing this here in this space? Oh, this space is just a few years. I've been collecting art from all over the world for almost 50 years now. I'm an old man. <laughs> the fact about this is that after having spent the first part of my adult life, the first half of it traveling all over, mostly collecting uh, European art and Asian art and African art, uh, various sorts. I came to realize that because I grew up in Georgia originally and moved away, but then came back when I realized that right outside my door, literally, was some of the greatest art in the world that so nobody you, knew was there. You went out and you ran all over the world and you went to Europe and all of the great museums and visited Rome and Paris and, and then it wasn't until you came back to Georgia 
got in the old car and went out on some of the back roads and ran around in your own backyard. An accident like that, I mean, I didn't just say I'm going to get in the car and go look for things. I, I, I had been extremely interested in black music growing up. And after I learned about the culture of the world and how it develops, it just became, it had, it had to be a fact and not a theory that the culture that could create that music and all the other wonderful things that black culture did, that the uneducated aspect of black culture in the South created, that had such an influence on American society, there must be a component of that in the visual arts. And up until that point, the only thing that had come to light were things that, and I don't mean this as insultingly, but the things that white people understood, which was kind of childlike, primitive, and what you, you mentioned the word naive art, which is the word they used to use about this kind of art. Naive, simple, and that wasn't what, I mean, that didn't equate. The people that created blues and jazz and rock and roll couldn't have evolved in art only to the level of naivete. And, uh, and so I did with some guidance and some recommendations from people I knew, I did go out and look for things and fortunately came upon different artists that I was astounded that such people lived and worked and did these things with no interest or knowledge of the art world. And, uh, it, was a, it was the artist Lonnie Holly that I mentioned earlier in Birmingham that really did change it for me. I'd can we take a look at his his sculptural yeah, installation here? We can certainly come in here. Okay, so this is the work of Lonnie Holly. This is the work of Lonnie Holly. His primary work of interest to me, though, he does everything. And he also creates music, wonderful music. He, he does everything. This man is, a, in a way, a poet. I mean, he doesn't write iambic pentameter. Uh, he's a poet and he's a musician, but he's a great visual artist and he's worked all his life with found materials, and he is a, the quintessential artist that comes out of these traditions I'm talking about that go back to slavery. And unlike artists that I do meet, African-American artists who say, I want to tie myself to my heritage, and I want to learn more about what my ancestors did and found object assemblage, Lonnie Holly just did it. I mean, Lonnie lived in, in the woods and made things that other people made in the woods, except that he, he made things that are right at home in major art museums and his work has been shown in major art museums and will be more and more when the, the veil of well, secrecy comes out. I just have to mention that I was uh, looking at a video of uh, works that are now at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. They had a selection of Picasso's beach sculptures mm -hmm. <laughs> and to tell you the truth, I think any of these basically would hold their hold their own against any of uh, any of own. Picasso's. You're yes, gonna, you're not going to lure me into that discussion because <laughs> I'll get hate letters and death threats. These I will let the I'll let the viewers decide for themselves, but at least it's something that they can reference. Well, let me let me do one little part of my sermon. Let the viewers have a chance to defy. Yes, defy well, them. that's because what we every do. exhibition we've ever done anywhere in the world has been greeted by loud cheers and great critical reviews. And I think I have to now impose my Good. silence. <laughs> we wouldn't want to get anybody into trouble here, but... Well, uh, I'm already in enough. Okay. I, one of my goals at the Com Report is always to uh, give people a chance to look at things and uh, make up their own minds, and then they can go out and do research and find out about some of these fantastic artists. Yeah, that is essentially the problem, is that people are not being given a chance to make up their own minds, because everyone who's not giving them the chance knows what the making up of the minds will create. And we can't have our uh, museums looking like the, uh, the NBA. Okay. Well... Mr. Arnett, I appreciate you giving us the time to have this little tour of a, a little part of your collection, and we really appreciate it. This is, as I said earlier, this is a really totally awesome uh, creation that you've put together here, and I'm sure that all of our viewers here at the Com Report are going to love this. And thank you, Kate. Imagine if anybody had cared if anybody had respected black culture, you can't imagine what What's might been have been lost. out there, what's been lost.